understanding of what the other animal sees. Right. So, I mean, one classic one consists of the subordinate chimpanzee and the uh, the high-ranking alpha male sitting apart from each other, and if food is put in a place where uh, the, uh, and, and there's a barrier, a, a glass barrier, but if he can see it, this guy won't take it. But if it's put here so he can see it, but he knows that he can't see it, then he will take it. And, and so there's, that's the, the sort of experiment, but there's lots done like that. So. But I, I don't think I'd look for a single criterion, like empathy or um, being able to laugh or uh, you know being able to look in, in a mirror and uh, recognize yourself. I wouldn't look for a single criterion because it looks like the phenomenon involves a whole lot of stuff. Um, that would be my my guess. Right. One last question on the aisle here. Hi, uh, I have a question in general about consciousness from the point of view of evolution. So what I mean here by consciousness is like the feeling that you say that I am doing this because I think all other emotions can be also be uh, coded in zombies. Like you laugh when something happens or something like that. But we have a feeling that we are doing this, which could be an illusion of the mind. But uh, my question is twofold. One is that why uh, evolution would create this illusion of mind? and uh, like for all the other phenomena like vision and everything, we've been able to create it in machines. But so did evolution really have the ingredients to create an illusion in the mind that, you know, someone is doing this? I mean, evolution cannot create anything if it is needed, like something like predicting the future or something. So it's twofold why it would do it and can we say it could do it or? Uh, so the, the, the question of why has many answers. One answer is if you believe that you, I'm the author of my action, if I believe I'm, the, uh, I'm actually the author of lifting my hand, it makes me a more effective actor. I mean, that's how Dan Wagner has argued in his book, The Illusion of Free Will, that those systems which, which have this per perception of authorship, they're more efficient because they believe that their action actually makes a difference. Um, as to the question of machines, we have no idea because we don't have a theory of consciousness, so we don't, we don't know once machines, and they're getting closer, can perform at our level of sensory motor processing and vision and olfaction, etc., whether that means automatically they'll have consciousness or whether you need something in addition to that, whether you need, does it need to be a, a parallel machine, does it need to be a serial machine, does it need to have, you know, what sort of architecture is it, we don't know because we don't have a theory of which systems, whether artificial or natural, uh, have these states, these, uh, these uh, so-called subjective states. We don't know right now. And your guess is as good as mine guess. But I think there are, I mean, there might be it another... It won't be Windows. <laughs> <laughs> there might be another, another point, too, that you want to make here. And that is, you know, we, we sometimes enter the discussion about consciousness as though it's all or nothing. No. That, you know, you have this great, huge, humongous, rich thing, whatever the heck it is, or you don't. And... But to, Actually, when you reflect on it and look at the data, it really looks like it's more likely that it comes in grades and degrees. It can be diminished. It can be enhanced. It, and it may be that there are, are um, early mammals that have it in, uh, and, and perhaps reptiles, and, and perhaps for all I know insects, that have it in a very modest degree. But it doesn't have quite the, you know, the same dimensions or the richness, whatever that is. Um, that, that we have. So, so I think that probably is an illusion as well, actually. All right, it's no illusion. We've run out of time. And I want to thank you all, the panelists, for <laughs> joining us. I want to thank you all for a day of uh, tremendous discussions. I have one, uh, one um, announcement to make is that there is going to be the unveiling of the manifesto and portrait downstairs, and we're going to split up into two groups. We're going to have the uh, MIT uh, and Pick Our Foundation and MIT uh, and Pick Our faculty go downstairs to the unveiling. Uh, there, is, there are not really enough places for everybody to stand, so the rest of us, uh, uh, if you don't have the invitation, please stay up here. We'll watch it on the big screen TV together, and uh, this way we'll have enough room for everybody to see what's happening. So thank you again for a wonderful day.
I, I understand that we have a little.